think Australia is dangerous now? With venomous snakes, box jellyfish and spiders the size of your hand, it's already a nightmare for the faint of heart. But what if I told you that today's threats are nothing compared to what used to roam the land? Before humans ever carved paths through the outback, this continent was home to a terrifying cast of prehistoric beasts, apex predators with claws, fangs, venom, and power beyond anything alive today. These weren't animals. These were monsters. Today, we're diving into five of the most dangerous and downright nightmarish creatures that once ruled Australia. And trust me, by the end of this video, you'll be thankful they're extinct. Or at least, we think they are. Picture this. You're walking through the bush and something shifts in the trees. You turn only to find yourself face to face with a 20 foot long lizard, the size of a van with jaws lined in razor sharp teeth. Meet Megalania, the largest terrestrial lizard to ever walk the earth. A prehistoric monitor lizard that may have stretched over 23 feet long, weighing more than a ton. And if that's not horrifying enough, it likely carried venom, just like its modern relative, the Komodo dragon. One bite, and your blood pressure would crash before you could even scream. Built like a living tank, Megalania had thick bones, hulking muscles, and a skull with a horned ridge between the eyes. It didn't chase prey. It waited, then struck with terrifying force. Giant marsupials, birds, eggs, even early Aboriginal humans may have been on the menu. And yes, they coexisted. Fossils suggest Megalania was alive just 50,000 years ago. That's yesterday in evolutionary time. So what wiped it out? Most signs point to humans. Armed with fire, spears, and coordinated hunting, we became a new apex predator Megalania couldn't compete with. But just imagine if it had survived a venomous dragon lurking in the bushlands. Hikers wouldn't need bear spray. They'd need body armor. You know what's worse than a crocodile in the water? A crocodile on land, chasing you down. That's exactly what Quincana was. A fully terrestrial, land-dwelling crocodile with serrated steak knife teeth. Legs built to lift his body off the ground and a taste for flesh. Some may have reached up to 10 feet long, weighing over 1,000 pounds. And unlike modern crocs that ambush from rivers, Quincana hunted on foot, in forests, in woodlands, even far from water. Its skull was deep and narrow with forward-facing nostrils, a design for breathing while sprinting. Some paleontologists believe Quincana behaved less like a crocodile and more like a big cat stalking and ambushing prey in open terrain. And get this, it lived alongside Megalania, giant kangaroos and marsupial lions. That means one apex predator had to compete with another. Croc versus lizard, predator versus predator. Australia was a prehistoric battlefield. If Quincana still existed, camping in the bush would be suicide. These creatures wouldn't wait by the river. They'd come find you. Forget lions, tigers, or bears. Australia had something far more disturbing. A wombat-sized predator with a bite stronger than any mammal on Earth. This was Thylacolio carnifex, the so-called marsupial lion. Weighing up to 350 pounds, this predator didn't look like a lion. But it played the part perfectly. Muscular, short, and deadly. No canines just giant incisor blades up front and premolars sharp enough to shear bone. Its bite force, pound for pound, stronger than a tiger's. One clamp and it could sever a spine. It likely hunted using ambush tactics, launching itself at prey and ending the fight in seconds. Fossil claw marks found in Australian caves suggest Thylacolio raised its young deep inside cave dens shielding them from rival predators. So why did it vanish? Once again, humans. The marsupial lion went extinct around 40,000 years ago, 
shortly after the arrival of Aboriginal Australians. Spears, fire and group hunting were likely too much, even for a predator with bone-breaking jaws. But had it survived? Imagine a creature built like a bear, hiding in trees, waiting for its next meal. It's the stuff of Aboriginal legends and nightmares. What could be worse than land dragons and running crocodiles? How about a 30-foot snake hiding in the trees, silently waiting to crush you? This was the Bluff Down's giant python, scientific name Liasis du Budingala, which roughly translates to ghost squeezer in the local language. And that's exactly what it was, a giant silent killer, longer than a school bus, heavier than a grizzly bear, and strong enough to crush its prey in seconds. With heat-sensitive pits, it could track mammals in total darkness. And unlike other pythons, it lived in dense forests, possibly even climbing trees to ambush prey from above. It likely fed on giant marsupials, wombats, or anything unlucky enough to cross its path. Unlike our other monsters, this one probably died out millions of years ago, before humans ever arrived. Climate change, cooling temperatures, and shifts in prey availability likely wiped it out. Still, imagine something like this alive today. You wouldn't just watch where you step. You'd have to watch the branches above. Every rustle in the trees could be your last. You've heard of the emu. Now meet its demonic cousin, a bird so big it couldn't fly, but could trample you flat. This was Genyornis also known as the Thunderbird, or, no joke, the Demon Duck of Doom. These birds were part of a strange, extinct group of flightless giants that once stalked the Australian plains. Some reached 10 feet tall and weighed over 1,000 pounds. That's heavier than a polar bear. And while they weren't exactly predators, they weren't slow either. Genyornis had a massive beak, some as long as a human arm. While some scientists think it was a plant eater, Others suggest it may have been omnivorous, maybe even scavenging or opportunistically attacking smaller animals. Either way, you didn't want to be in its way. And yes, early Aboriginal Australians may have encountered them. There are ancient rock carvings and fossil remains that place these birds walking the land right alongside the first people of Australia. Why did they vanish? As always, climate change, habitat loss, and most critically, human hunting. Controlled burns, competition for food, and loss of nesting areas likely sealed their fate. One by one, these titanic birds disappeared from the earth, leaving only bones and stories behind. Australia today is already infamous for being dangerous, but long before the snakes and spiders we fear now, this land was a war zone of giants. Venomous dragons, sprinting crocodiles, marsupial lions, 30-foot pythons and towering thunderbirds, all wiped out in a geological blink of an eye. Some vanished before humans ever arrived. Others may have been pushed over the edge by our ancestors, but one thing's for sure, we were not always the top of the food chain. If even one of these monsters were still alive today, the Australian bush would be uninhabitable. We wouldn't be the hunters, we'd be the hunted. And here's the wild part. Australia wasn't alone. Every continent had its monsters. So if you want to see what horrors used to roam North America, Africa, or even Europe, let me know in the comments. Like the video, subscribe, and tell me where we should explore next. Because the age of monsters may be over, but their stories are just beginning.